How do we control the tempo or speed of audio inside Digital Performer? There are many options. Let's start by playing back this multi-track drum mix. These drums were recorded without any click reference. DP is currently set to be under the control of the tempo slider, which is set to 120 beats per minute. If I turn on the DP click, it won't match the live drum performance. But you know what? That doesn't matter, because if all I need to do is speed up or slow down audio, there's a simple solution. I can select all the audio, go to the Region menu, and choose Scale Time. I can edit the Start Time, End Time, or overall length of the selection. I can also scale the selected time range by percentage. This means I don't need to know the original tempo of the performance in the audio files. If I want, I can choose to scale the length of the selection and in this case I'll set that to 105 percent which means I'm going to make the selection 5 percent longer and that results in a 5 percent slowdown of the tempo in the selected region. You see there's the option to timescale any audio within the selection. I'll click OK and DP applies the edit. I'll disable the metronome click and play the audio and you'll hear that it has been slowed down by 5 percent. I'll undo that and go back to scale time. This time I'll enter a value of 95%, which will speed the selection up by 5%. DP creates new audio based on the selection, and I'll play that back. You hear the audio has been speeded up by 5%, so I don't need any tempo reference if all I want to do is scale the time or duration of a selection. But if I do have tempo information for the audio, DP provides some very powerful tools for tempo control. I'll put the sequence under the control of the conductor track. This allows for changes in the sequence tempo. As a matter of fact, if I scroll up to display the conductor track, you see that there are already tempo events in that track. I've already done the work of creating a tempo track in the DP sequence that accurately reflects the tempo of the musical performance within the audio tracks. If I zoom down, you can see that there's a tempo event at each bar line. If you watch the BPM indicator here, you'll see that changes based on the position of the playback wiper in the sequence. Let's listen. You can see the sequence tempo changing here. Now that we have an accurate tempo map, I can go to any point in the sequence and the DP click will be in time with the audio performance. The next thing I'll do is select all and go to the audio menu and choose copy sequence tempo to sound bytes. This copies the tempo data from the conductor track into the selected sound bytes. Those sound bytes now have embedded tempo maps that accurately reflect their musical performance. You can see the bar lines superimposed over the audio sound bites. I notice that if I drag the playback wiper, I see quite a wide range of tempo here. So perhaps something I'd like to try is to select all, go to the region menu, and choose scale tempo. Scale tempo provides all sorts of options for changing current tempo of a sequence. I can add BPM, I can subtract BPM, or for example, I can limit to a range. So I'll select DP to scale the selected tempo range to a minimum of 117 beats per minute and a maximum of 125 BPM. I'll apply that, and what that does is change the tempo events in the conductor track. The selected tempo range has been limited to the BPM that I specified. So there will still be tempo changes in the sequence, but they won't be quite so drastic. Now I do the follow-up step of adjusting the selected sound bites to the new sequence tempo. DP looks at the edited tempo data in the conductor track and compares that to the tempo maps embedded in the sound bites. DP creates new audio and sound bites that match the new sequence tempo. So now when I play the track back and I'll turn on the DP click, you hear that the audio performance has now been scaled to the specified tempo range.
undo the tempo change and go back to the original sequence and tempo. This time, I'll just put DP under the control of the tempo slider. The tempo slider applies a fixed tempo to the sequence. If we look at the sound bites, you see these red lines. These lines indicate that the embedded tempo map doesn't match the DP sequence tempo, which right now is set to 120 beats per minute. But I can select all these sound bites and choose Adjust Sound Bites to Sequence Tempo, and now DP will flatten out the tempo of the audio and the sound bites to match the current tempo slider setting. Right now, we're not using any data from the conductor track. The sequence tempo is set by the tempo slider, and now when we play the audio back, it will play back at a fixed tempo, as if the musician had played to a click track in the first place. Okay, let's undo the tempo changes one more time and go back to the original sequence and audio. We're back to using the conductor track to follow the changing tempo of the audio. Now watch this. I'm going to import an audio loop. I'll drag that from the desktop to the left side of the sequence editor and DP imports the loop to a new track. I'll zoom down a bit. I know there's a pickup bar in the original drums, so I've got the edit resolution turned on and I snap the loop to the start of the second bar of the music. So the loop starts at the right place, but does its tempo match? Let's find out. No, the loop tempo doesn't match the rest of the audio, but that's an easy fix. I'll select the loop and choose Adjust Sound Bites to Sequence Tempo. DP changes the tempo of the loop to match the current sequence. I'll make a copy of the loop and drag that out to the next four bars. There's different tempo data at this point in the sequence, so I'll adjust the new sound bite to its current sequence location tempo. Now I have eight bars of looped audio that matches the changing tempo of the original performance. You can see the tempo change up here. For my last examples, I've zoomed down to the start of the sequence. You can see the tempo events in the conductor track, and you can hear the DP click follow these changes to stay in sync with the audio performance. I'll go to the Project menu, Conductor Track, Change Tempo. The Change Tempo window provides a wide range of options and tools for editing tempo data in conductor tracks. For this example, I'll enter a tempo change from bar 2 through bar 3. I want the start tempo to be 110 beats per minute, and then by the beginning of the next bar, I want the tempo to be up to 119 beats per minute. I'll choose a log curve for the tempo change, and I'll click OK. You can see the newly calculated tempo events in the conductor track. I'll follow that up with Adjust Sound Bites to Sequence Tempo, and DP makes that adjustment. I'll play that back, and you'll hear the accelerando on the intro bar. Now I'll get the Tool Palette and select the Pencil Tool, and I can just draw in tempo events. So that's going to be a pretty crazy set of tempo changes there. Once more, I'll select all and adjust the sound bites to the new sequence tempo, and I'll play that back, and you'll really be able to hear how DP has radically changed the tempo of the audio performance. So as you can see, DP provides precise and complete control over sequence tempo and audio and MIDI data in that sequence. The DP audio time stretching is easy to use and sounds great. Stay tuned for the last video in this series where we'll explore how to work with tempo-based quantization of audio and MIDI inside DP8.